Since the UK government committed to £500 million worth of funding for low CO2 steel making here in Port Talbot, and since the company announced a restructuring which involves the closure of the heavy end to stem losses of a million pounds a day, we've committed to capture that story from start to finish, from the first part of the restructuring, the closure of the coke ovens back in March, right the way through to the building and commissioning of the electric arc furnace. So we've got a long way to go and if you're not already following us on YouTube, please subscribe because it'll all be on there and it's stuff that you won't see on the telly. Now the second milestone along the restructuring path is the closure of Blast Furnish 5 behind us. So I'm joined by Dean Cartwright, your works manager, Coke Centre and I. And Dean, uh, before we go on to the closure process of number five and what that means to the people who work here and the people in the community. Tell us a bit about the history of this furnace. It's been here longer than people think, hasn't it? It has, Tim. Afternoon. Um, yeah, I think there's been a furnace here from the 50s, early 50s. Um, this furnace was built, rebuilt after the ex tragic explosion on the old number five furnace back in 2003. And I, and I believe I'm not one for the exact stats, but it's over 38 million tons now that this furnace has done. So it's 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 given us a very very good life. Uh, and, and for me personally, it's been it was my first furnace as a, a, a single furnace manager, and it, it's given me very good service. And, and people have. You know, there's been some really good times. The camaraderie on the furnace, people have really dedicated their lives to it. I mean, not forgetting there's been some hard times on this furnace for people too. Uh, but it's been a great stalwart for the company and, it, and in, my, in my mind has been the most reliable, consistent reli reliable furnace that we've had. Yeah, as you say, some difficult days there back in 2001 with the explosion that uh, killed those three men who worked here. But, you know, back in 2018, we came, the comms team came down to visit the Life Extension. It was a big project at the time. So, you know, we touched the very edge of that. And I think we first saw the passion that people have for blast furnaces. It's a pretty close-knit crew down here, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there is no hiding place on a furnace. Everybody has to do their fair share of work. Um, it can be tough but it can be very rewarding too. And I think, you know, it, it's relatively unique now in this modern day to, uh, to see the type of camaraderie in sometimes in the face of adversity, but, but in a very rewarding environment as well. Yes, yeah, so much as it's sad to see the end of a blast furnace, of course we are transitioning to a new technology, an electric arc furnace, and to move on to that new technology, of course, we have to let the, the old technology go. That's happening this week, Dean. It started already. Tell us what's happened so far and what's coming up in the, in the next few days that employees and, and local residents might, might see. Yeah, Tim, so, so I would say hidden behind all, you, you see the molten metal, you see the sparks flying, hidden behind all of that is a very detailed and structured plan undertaken by very professional blast furnace men. Um, and, and now we're into the final stages. So, so this week, um, and, and I've said, for the last couple of months really this is not about whether it comes off it's about taking the furnace off in the most professional manner and in the safest manner and we're in the last few days so this week is sort of laid out we changed the burden on the furnace um, at the tail end of last week to get it ready for this stop today now today is all about putting extra instrumentation extra purge lines and some extra sprays to um, we'll come back on after about 24 hours, so we'll come back on uh, late tonight. Um, we'll run for about 24 hours and then it's all about the blowdown, which is the process in which we stop charging materials into the top of the furnace, so we stop feeding the furnace with raw materials, we carry on blowing the blast, and slowly then the blast will consume all the materials inside the furnace down to a certain point. Now that requires some very special sort of process which you don't normally do and never want to do this in a normal operation but as the materials drop and drop and drop the conditions inside the furnace change and that'll take us right to the very end and at, at some point towards the end as late as possible we're always balancing between the temperature and the composition of the gas coming off the top of the furnace at some point towards the end we'll come off the works gas main and we will just open the bleeders the final blow from the furnace will be through the bleeders so you'll see some steam and you depends on when that is but you probably hear some noise as well and the last final cast then should then take place now at any point you know we are constantly monitoring the conditions and then at any point we can deviate slightly but i'm very confident that the plan will run um, exactly as i've described and so far this week you know touchwood 
um, and, and thanks to all the very meticulous planning over the last number of months really, it's all going very well. As you said, it's quite an unusual process, but it's one that we've done before. I remember back in 2018 when they took the same furnace off, seeing the steam that was coming out of the top of the furnace and, and some of the noise that went with it. But people should be reassured that you know, there's, there's few people in the world better than the team we've got here to do this. There's a huge amount of experience and knowledge here to take us through this process, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the blowdown rig that we call it, the, the extra instrumentation that we put in, was one of the first in the world to be so sophisticated. Um, we've got the team here in Portal, and we've done this several, several times. Um, but we've also got the wider Tata group as well. So there's a close-knit community of um, blast furnace operators across the world and certainly within the Tata group. So the other members of that community have, have uh, peer-reviewed the plan that we have. They've had their inputs and generally, and we, you know, we've had visits, we've had teams meetings, etc. And generally the plan has been ticked off and, and it is as good as you can get. Yeah, so it is a momentous occasion, have no doubt about it. Taking a furnace down but at the end of its life, as Dean said, this furnace has been here since the 1950s in one form or other. It's a significant moment in history. It's going to be very emotional for the crews here. It's going to be very emotional for lots of people in the community who will have worked here or the, in the past, either operating or maintaining this furnace. It's an icon for the, for the, for the industry and for the community. But rest assured, you know, take heed from Dean's words. You know, the process is going very well. They've got the experts there. Utmost priority is safety. There's a day or two or three to go yet, so we're on with the process and we'll definitely come back, Dean, to see the last tap and to see the closure of the blast furnace and that will mark the start of a new beginning when we can start looking forward to a new way of making steel making. But in the meantime, Dean, over the next couple of days, to you and your teams, the very best of luck and I hope it goes well for you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Tim.